What's going on, everyone? Cooking with Clint here. Last few live we've done, we were at Brooking headquarters, but today we are broadcasting live from TA Appliances in Kitchener. And uh, we're going to be giving you lots of great gift ideas for your grilling enthusiast or someone that's maybe looking to become a grilling enthusiast. Um, so we're going to go through a bunch of the amazing Burrow King accessories that are available. And uh, Burrow King's been making excellent accessories for a long time. I've been using Burrow King products much longer than I've actually been doing work with them. Um, the one thing about the Burrow King accessories is they typically do not go on sale. But we're going to change that for you today because today we have a excellent offer through TA and that's 20% off any of these accessories that we're talking about or even any of the broken accessories that are in the store and you can take advantage of this great offer by either ordering online there should be an actual link if you're watching this live stream to go in and order or you can come into the store um, but there is with this uh, the discount that we're going to be offering today we do expect the accessories to sell out quite quickly so if you want to make sure that you can reserve one for your special someone or even for yourself I definitely recommend purchasing online today using the code BROILKING120. Right, so, so we're making history today then you're saying? We are, we are. It's not too often you'll find a sale like this, especially the 20% off. Yeah. Um, so we're supposed to be doing you know, 12 gift ideas for Christmas. I'm going to throw even more than that at you because there's more than 12 that I use and that I love. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of some of the stuff we have on the table. Also give you a little tour of uh, in the back room here where the actual accessories are kept just to kind of give you an idea as to how much stuff is available. Um, but uh, let's get started. Well, first of all, how many people do we have in the chat right now, Ryan? You got a nice solid five or so. <laughs> nice <laughs> solid five. Well, hello five to wherever yeah. you are. Thanks for joining us. I know we also have a bunch of other people joining us on the Facebook feed as well. Yeah. So sure. hello to everyone that's on Facebook. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, a lot of great ideas here that you can either use as stocking stuffers or put them together to create a larger gift. And even if you want to do like a 12 days of Christmas yourself, I'm going to give you enough ideas to, to go through that today. So again, 20% off all the Burrow King accessories, not just the ones that we're going to talk about today, but all of the ones in the store or online, taappliances.com, or you can visit any of the six stores to purchase. So. Um, I'm going to start off with one of my favorites or one of the most important things. I constantly have people reaching out to me asking me, how do I cook this? How do I cook a steak? How do I, how do I cook anything, basically? The first question I ask them is, do you have a meat thermometer or a right. probe? If the answer is yes, then I jump in and help. Uh, if not, I ask them to kindly get one before <laughs> I can help them out because it does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now, as you guys all know, I am Burrow King's grill master. I'm also a professional pit master. There is no shame in using a digital meat probe. What this will do is allow you to make sure that you get perfect results every single time. It takes the guesswork out of it. Also, even if you know how to cook a steak or, or chicken or whatever you're cooking properly, a lot of times when you're grilling, you have people over, sometimes you get distracted. So having a, an alert on your probe is, uh, is a really good idea. And this here through Burrow King is a two-pronged probe okay so you can do two meats at the same time but it also comes with clips so if you want to use one of the probes to monitor your grill temp you can do that as well and um, this is really nice because it does light up blue when it goes off so even if you have to close the door this time of year it's really cold you're grilling in the winter you don't want to be standing outside by your grill so this is going to alert you with the sound and also with a flashing blue light to let you know that it's on um, the two probes come in handy if you're doing multiple cuts also if you're doing a really big cut of meat you're not sure of your probe spot like something like a brisket uh, a prime rib this time of year is another good example you can use two probes to make sure that you actually have an accurate um, temp and um, these you actually leave even while you cook. So unlike the traditional probe where you check in and it might be too late that you've actually overcooked, this is gonna let you know when your meat is done. Awesome. Uh, Andy, Robert, and Charles are all saying hello to you there. Hello. We're happy to see you back. Absolutely, glad to be back. Yeah, oh, and Mary's asking, uh, do you have a beer can chicken roaster? A beer can chicken roaster, we do, and we're gonna talk about that. I promise right. that we're gonna get there. You Hang know, we on, can Mary. even do that one next, that's all no problem. Right. Um, this, this is also a really good one too, so if you're doing something like a steak or something like a smaller cut that you don't wanna actually leave a probe in, um, this is an instant read thermometer. So this one will read the temperature a lot quicker than this one down here. 
Uh, but again, if, if you're checking too late, then you know, whatever you're making could be overcooked. So I do actually use both of these in my arsenal at home, uh, but I tend to use the, the leave-in pro more often. So yeah, I actually used that one doing a sausage, October, October fifth sausage cook off we had here. And how did it turn out? Yeah, it was perfect. It's perfect, right? Yeah, nice and juicy. Wrong. Yep. Perfectly cooked. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's talk about the beer can roaster. Yeah. So we have this right here, the chicken roaster. You can put the can on the inside. And uh, what I like about this method is that you don't have the chicken laying fat in its, laying down in its own grease or fat on a pan. I find a lot of times when you roast a chicken in the oven, the bottom, it's, it's an undesired yeah. texture, we'll uh, say. Yeah. Versus when you stand the chicken upright like this, you're gonna get a nice texture all the way around. Um, I do recommend, regardless of the heat source or grill source that you're using, I do recommend cooking poultry at a minimum of 300 degrees. And personally, I like to go 350. That's gonna ensure that you get a nice crispy skin. Now, this does work, okay? The beer can chicken method does work but not for the reason you think it does. So don't worry about what kind of beer or what kind of can you're putting in there. Um, common misconception is that the, the heat boils the, the liquid in the can and then steams the chicken from the inside. It's not quite how it works. Basically what the can does is it acts as an insulator. So instead of your chicken cooking from the outside and the inside at the same time, it's actually just cooking from the outside in. So you get a more even cook. You're not gonna dry out the inside. Oh, that's actually what Craig was asking as you started talking about that. Yeah. So there you go. So a lot of people will say, hey, beer can chicken doesn't work. Technically, not for the reasons people think it does, but it is a great method. And with this one here, you'll get great results every time. You can also add some, as you can see in the picture, if you want to add some herbs. Um, I'm a big fan of lemons, onions, and thyme. You can do down there. Okay. Mm. And then see, you got a little leave-in probe there. But again, you can go back, combine this. You can even do two at the same time, two probes. And your chicken is going to turn out perfect every time with the roaster and with the broken probe. So Robert's even asking, can you use soda or 7-Up? Absolutely. You can use whatever liquid you use. You can even put water in the can. Yep. You can even put water in the can. It, it really, really doesn't matter what you, what you use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Okay. Any, uh, any other questions in the chat that have come up? Is there any of these accessories that we'd like to look at next? Oh, we're, we're going through them quite well so far. People are being active. We had a bunch more join us. We're up to like... 15 directly here, not to mention all the Facebook uh, views and stuff, so. Excellent, so again, just for everyone who's joined us, thank you again for joining us today. We are talking accessories. We are focusing on broking today. And in case you missed it, today is the only day you can buy any of these or any of the broking accessories in the store for 20% off. All you need to do is go to the TA Appliance website and use the code BROILKING120. You can either have them shipped to your house, you can reserve and come pick up in store, or you can actually come into the store to purchase. But with the sale going on, I would recommend reserving online. Yeah, we're making history here. <laughs> We've got a broken hat here. Here, let's hey, switch this up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get rid of the Oakley. Let's see if this fits. Almost. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> there you go. There we go. How do I look? Stylish. Got, got the hair back Styling now. Profiling. Okay, so we've done the chicken roaster. We've done the probes. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about uh, some wood chips next. Great gift idea if someone has a smoker, but even better gift idea for someone that does not have a smoker. Even if you're running a Burrow King gas grill right now, you can convert any gas grill into a smoker by simply using some wood chips. So you can also buy an actual wood chip holder through Burrow King. We have it in the other There's room. I can show you. Of the box. Oh, actually, see. perfect. There it is right there. Yeah. So you can do that. If you don't have this, it's okay. A little bit of tin foil, some holes in it. Put the tin foil packet on one burner leave the other burners off and your gas grill is now a smoker. So if someone already has a charcoal felt fed smoker, this is a great idea, but also if they just have a gas grill, you can infuse some nice flavors into your food by using some wood chips, okay? This is something I do a lot of times when I go away um, to visit family out of town, they don't have a smoker, but they want me to smoke some food for them. So I just get them to pick up a box of wood chips and a smoke tray and we are in business. Uh, Jess is actually asking, what is your favorite wood chip? Wood chip, I typically like to use 
hickory or cherry or a little combination of both. Um, maple's nice, oak's good. Um, the only one I typically stay away from is the mesquite. Um, it's, it's a, it is a little bit of a sharp flavor. Now some people Powerful, right? absolutely love that. So I'm not saying don't buy mesquite. It's just personally not my flavor profile and my family find it a little, a little too sharp as well. So hickory and cherry, maple's really good, apple's good, alder. You really can't have a, a bad option, but my choice is a hickory cherry mix. And um, like the mesquite is really more for like a, was it like a beef or? A um, I would definitely, if you are going to use mesquite, it would, it would pair best with beef. Um, I, I did try mesquite on chicken once and I already mentioned, I don't really like mesquite, but on the chicken, it was, uh, it was really not for me. So, so yes, Robert, you can actually taste the difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah especially with the wood chips, the wood chips are going to give you a stronger, um, a stronger flavor than, than a pellet is. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's being burned, it's just, it's a little bit different of a makeup. And, and again, you do not want to buy one of these for someone if they're using a pellet grill, you actually have to. To, to buy pellets, pellets for that and if you're not sure if the person you're buying for is going to be able to utilize any of these fuel is always an amazing idea for a gift because if someone has a pellet grill or they have a smoker they're always going to need to use fuel mm -hmm. um, i know i've talked about this so much before but this is my absolute favorite pellet on the market i have tested pellets through other manufacturers and brands i have tested them on multiple different brands of pellet smokers and the Burrell King Smoke Masters blend for me is the absolute best pellet on the market. Um, what they do is, I mentioned the, the woods I like to use. This is actually a hickory cherry maple mixture. Now, a lot of other manufacturers do sell mixed pellets, but what they do is they're just mixing different amounts into a bin and then those get sorted out into bags. So you're not getting a consistent mix. Every bag is gonna be slightly different. With these, each in individual pellet has the three woods compressed into each oh, pellet. Oh, wow. So you're going to get a consistent mix every yeah, time. Yeah, I never thought about that. And the reason why I like these, they first of all produce an excellent smoke flavor. Even in a pellet smoker, you get a nice, not overpowering, but nice smoke flavor on them. But they also burn very clean, so you're not getting a lot of ash, okay? Mm -hmm. um, a clean pellet smoker will work way better than any other any other pellet grill in the market regardless as to what the value or what the brand is so being with the with a clean burning pellet you're not going to have to clean it as much and you're also going to get better overall performance um, so the burn time on these is excellent the smoke flavor on them is excellent and they burn very very clean so these are the only pellet i use in my pellet grills nice. okay now if the person you're buying for doesn't have a pellet grill but they have something that's charcoal fed uh, again, fuel is a great, great gift because they're always going to need it. For charcoal, I do not like the briquettes. I like the 100% natural lump. Again, burns hotter, burns cleaner, and we'll say burns meaner. Just, just a better, a better smoke flavor that you're going to get out of 100% natural lump. There's like a lot less of that dark smoke when you light it up. You're not going to get as much dirty smoke. Um, with, with the, with the charcoal though, you do want to make sure that you're letting that charcoal burn down a bit right. before you actually start cooking on it. Um, even a good quality charcoal like that, it is important to let it burn down a little bit. Right. So, okay. So again, fuel, great idea because it's something that they're always going to need. Just be careful when you're handling the bags because sometimes <laughs> you do get some residue on you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions in the chat? So far, so good. Okay. Awesome. Pick out a favorite, man. Pick out a favorite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or not. I, I, I hate to be know. basic. Tongs. Good tongs. I actually, I did a 12 Days of Christmas two years ago and this was one of my main features. Um, I, I don't have any with me right now, but these are precise enough. You can actually pick up toothpicks. Oh, nice. Not that you're going to need to do that, but it just, it gives you a lot more control over the grill. Um, I typically don't like using a tong that's super long. I find the longer it is, the less control you have over it. The spring on these are excellent. I think I have pairs of these at home that are going on six or seven years old now, and they still spring back just like they did the day I got them. You got the rubber handles on here and you can also lock them in the closed position and they'll just oh, hang nice. on one of the pegs on your grill. Nice. And when you're ready to use, where you go. Um, however, it's very, very important that anytime you pick up a pair of tongs before you barbecue, 
I want to hear at least three clicks, okay? If you ain't clicking, we ain't kicking, all right? It's official of barbecue rules. Disaster will happen if you don't click three times. And it's amazing how something small like that, that seems kind of like uh, trivial, ends up not being trivial when you're actually cooking, right? Yeah, good set of tar. Like even like if I suddenly fall down like a little onion slice or whatever, you can actually get it off the grill. You're not going to tear your food. You can pick it up from the side. You can pick it up underneath. You just have total control here. Yeah. So it's yeah. just going to make your grilling experience easier. And I know this might seem basic, but a good set of tongs it's it's essentially the tool that you're using the most right, when you're barbecuing exactly. or grilling or smoking so having a good set is good yeah. um, i do like these as well uh, especially when i'm cooking for any of my vegetarian or vegan friends because right. these tongs are actually color coded so you know you can do your meat here you can have this as a clean set this for vegetables so that way you don't get cross contamination right these ones are a little bit longer than these but not to the point where they're clunky or uncomfortable to use. Um, and the other thing I like about this one is the one set of the tongs actually flat. So it helps you to sometimes scoop up underneath yeah. um, to grab something. So these you have really good control as well. And like I said, I, I typically use these when I'm cooking multiple proteins, vegetables, if I don't want cross contamination, because right. you're getting the uh, the color coded on there. Yeah, restaurants do that. Exactly, they do. Um, Alexis is asking what is your favorite grill to cook on, but we'll probably take a look at those in a little bit yeah we will um i don't mind mentioning it though i um i've got a lot of bro king grills at home <laughs> i've got uh, two or three i got three gas now i've got the pellet grill and i also have the bro king keg and if i had to pick one i would have to say that the bro king keg is my favorite that keg's a beauty isn't it it is it's and it's beauty. just it's it's beautiful i love the smell i love the aroma but my favorite thing as silly as it sounds is the sound because it doesn't make any there's no auger running there's no gas running in the valves it's just you hear a little sizzle from the drippings of the meat drop onto the coals every time that happens you get a nice beautiful aroma and uh it's i call it my weekend warrior because that's typically where i'll sit out back and actually accompany the smoke um while, I, while i'm cooking um but yeah the keg is definitely my favorite it's versatile too very 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 versatile you can use it as a smoker you can use it as a grill you can use it as a barbecue you can pretty much do anything with it yeah. um, it's got so a truck trailer hitch too it does <laughs> tailgate hitch yeah that's uh i haven't i haven't utilized that feature yet but it is available if, if you want to do that and jeff is asking do you use a pizza stone i do there you go i do i don't think we have one on the table we don't have one on the table they but we can we can show you some options when we go into the other room though um and the pizza stone you can use to cook pizza but you can also do bread mm -hmm. um i baked brioche buns on it in both in my pellet my gas and on my keg i've, I've baked buns mm -hmm. um you can do flatbreads um, but you can also use it as a heat deflector. So if you do have the keg or one of the charcoal smokers, Good you point. can use it to, to block the heat to give you the more uh, more indirect heat on the cook. But we'll uh, we'll show you. We have Broking actually makes an excellent pizza stone. So we'll show it to you in the other room. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, they're they're loving the uh, the tips here for sure. Robert does, and uh, Mary says uh, they love cooking on charcoal. So cook I love I love I love charcoal. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, this time of year, for all my people that are still out there grilling, even though it's cold, I grill every day, but uh, I understand if you don't, but I do, because it gets so dark so early, grill light's a really good option to have. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Right there. There you go. Long battery life and uh, works really well. It gives a good amount of light. You really should only need one per grill, but if you want, the, the grills are um, set up to, to handle multiple lights as well if you want. Mm -hmm. Now Alexis is asking what's the best way to cook a smash burger on the grill? So perhaps you wouldn't necessarily want to do it straight on the grill. No, right? so if you want to do a smash burger, you can use the stainless steel plancha right here. Yeah. But what I would recommend is the actual cast iron griddle. Mm -hmm. The stainless steel is a good heat conductor, especially because this is a very thick gauge, so it does give you good heat retention. Mm -hmm. But this is what I cook every single burger I make on, whether it's a smash burger or a regular patty. I do them all on the Broil King cast iron griddle. There you go. For these, it is important to know what grill the person has because these are actually exact fit so you use your grid lifter which is another one of my favorite tools if you want to put in your smoke pouch or if you want to put in a griddle or a plancha even if the grill's hot you can securely pick up your broken grill 
move it out and then move in your griddle or accessory, okay? Um, but I like to use this for your burgers. The reason why is it's going to give you a crust on the full surface. So in that smash burger style, that's what it is. It, it's a thick crust, thin burger, thick crust on the top and the bottom. And in addition to using the griddle, there you go. Look at that. This. Now this one here, I, like I can actually, it, it will take quite a bit of weight. So you can form your little meatballs, smash them with the Burrow King Super Flipper right on the grill. Um, there's also other items that you can get now where you heavy weights and stuff, but this actually works great. I would recommend putting a little piece of parchment paper or a little piece of butcher paper in yep. between so that way it doesn't stick when you're smashing. Yeah. Also, beverage opener on here always hey, comes in can't handy. Can't go wrong with that. There. <laughs> and it's it's really good quality. It's all solid handle. Yeah. And you can put quite a bit. It's got horsepower. Nice. Yeah. Alexis is asking if the griddle is hard to clean, but probably no harder than a cast iron skillet, right? Um. Yeah. So basically, you treat a cast iron griddle the exact same way a cast iron skillet. So when you're done cooking, you're going to want to get any debris that's off there and then just re-season it so that it's ready to go for the next time. Mm -hmm. um, I use my griddle so much that I leave it in my barbecue all the time, but you can take it out, store it in a bag, season, so that way it will last you a lifetime. And the cast iron griddle, if treated properly, will last you a lifetime. Yeah. Um, but again, make sure you know what grill you're buying for because, and it does say on the boxes, but you want to make sure because you're going to want that exact fit. You're not going to want it sitting on top of the grills. This is the beautiful thing about the Burrow King exact fit is they go right in, right on top of the burner. So you're, you're not losing any, any heat energy um, right. in between because it, it's right down on top of it. Very good. All right. Well, yeah, that's uh, a lot of the questions there. Um, was there anything else you want to touch on the table or should we go look at the, uh, the accessory wall? Um, I want to talk about this cutting board. Yeah. All right. Um, so I've always been a fan of these ones here. If you're cutting something big, like a prime rib, or you're going to have a lot of juices that are running out, you have your nice deep channels and wells here. Mm -hmm. The only problem is if you're grilling as much as I am, you're constantly cleaning these things. So we just came out with this cutting board this year. You may not want to slice a 10 pound prime rib on it because the juice wells aren't very deep. But what I love about this, first of all, you got your rubber stoppers, but this one here is dishwasher safe. Oh, nice. So this time of year, you're doing your bit, even if you're not gonna use it for grilling, but you can just use it as a cutting board. Mm -hmm. I would recommend picking up a couple of these because it's so much easier to just pop them in the dishwasher than having to manually scrub them by hand. Absolutely. So. Huge fan of both of these, um, but like I said, recently I've pretty much only been using these new fiber ones because they are dishwasher safe. Awesome. What else you got here? Is there anything else? Um, I know that I touched on the paper earlier, so this makes it a great accessory for when you're doing your smash burgers. Um, but butcher paper is something that I use in quite a bit of my long cooks. So um, ribs, Pork shoulder, pork butt, mm -hmm. uh, picnic roasts, brisket, any of your big cuts, you're typically going to be wrapping it um, towards the end of the cook. And a lot of people use tin foil, but um, tin foil has a tendency to create steam, which is going to remove the nice texture that you've spent hours or sometimes a day to build. So when you wrap with butcher paper to finish your cook or during your rest, um, it's not going to create the same steam that the, that the foil is. And even if you use this to finish your cook, the butcher paper will actually allow your bark to continue to build underneath. So I highly recommend the butcher paper instead of tin foil. Um, you could even, as Ryan mentioned earlier, you could even use this to wrap these gifts up for oh, someone. Yeah, so if you make rest, a great right? wrapping paper. Yeah. Um, but the Burrow King butcher paper would be a great accessory for anyone on your list. That's awesome. Tom was actually just asking what the benefits are, and you went right into it. There so you go. go. It's like you're in the heads of our viewers. <laughs> it's like it's like I've it's like I've cooked once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So this guy's good too. Nice. Now, I'm sure people have seen this style before. 
through other manufacturers. What I like about this one here is that it's stainless steel. So if you're getting in here with your tongs, you're getting in here with any tools, you're not gonna have to worry about scratching the enamel. So not just scratching your dish, but that enamel ends up coming off and going into the food. Mm -hmm. So highly recommend stainless steel. This is a really good quality. Again, this is something that you're gonna have for a very, very long time, if not for a lifetime because of the quality of the product. And again, today only, 20% off all of these accessories that we've talked about, but not just these, but all of the Broil King accessories, both in store and online. Head to taappliance.com, enter in the discount code BROILKING120 to get 20% off today only. That's right, making history. Making history. We're going on sure. sale. All right. <laughs> let's go for a walk. All right, let's do it. I think my hat's... A little readjustment here, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, now this is the grill zone, folks. If you haven't been to our kitchen location, we got this little spot back here where you can find all sorts of Royal King accessories and every other, th you know, thing you could possibly want for your barbecues. We got I mean, even a few different sections here, so this is just one. We got this, is, this is like the tiny section. The tiny, yeah. Tiny section. Oil sprayer is really good. Uh, when you're using oil in your grills, if you're using something in a can, that's okay. Just make sure that there's no salt or any additives in it. Because the salt or the additives could actually eat away at the enamel or the cast iron on your grill. So I like using this. Um, avocado oil or grapeseed oil are two good options to use to coat your grill. Uh, gloves are always a good option. I like these. They're heavy duty. Leather. They... Um, I won't call them burn proof, but they definitely are burn resistant. And um, these have a pretty good heat rating on them here. So the gloves are a good option. Uh, if they have a pellet grill, pellet sifts a really good option as well. So you use this to scoop your pellets. The dust will fall at the bottom and then you can either transfer into a pellet container um, or um, right into the, the pellet grill itself. Nice. And then I know I was mentioning the smoke box for the wood chips when we were over at the table. But there's also, if you want to buy the pellets instead of the wood chips, there's actually a pellet smoker box oh, wow. that can be used in your gas grill as well. That's nice. Oh, and uh, they were just asking, Tom's asking, how do you start your charcoal? And I noticed since we're right here, right? Very good question. Um, you can use these. These are pretty good. There's no fluid built into them. Right. Um, but I actually use the, the hot rod. So it's right. basically, which I will show you, we have one over here. But you basically just you put it in the charcoal, you turn it on, let it start. This has very little accelerant, but if you're starting with an electric source like the hot rod, you have zero accelerant. So you're not going to have any unwanted flavors or tastes le left behind. Right. And I'm going through... The, the, um, I'm going through the effort of using 100% natural lump because I don't want the additives. So there's no sense adding outside additives to your beautiful charcoal that you have. Okay. Perfect. Lots of options for wood chips. I know that we just had the one box out there, mm -hmm. but these are all different flavors of Broil King wood chips. They all burn extremely well. Amazing. And uh, actually, here's the trailer hitch that you were talking about earlier. Oh, really? So yeah, if you're did. tailgating, you have a broken keg, which is actually right here. You can actually right. pop this on your truck. And uh, I don't recommend that you cook while driving, no, but no, I'm not yeah. going to lie. I have seen a few people do it. But it'll actually keep it warm for quite a while, right? Like oh, once yeah. You, once you've had it going, you, you put out the fire. Very well insulated. It's just that's a recipe for potential disasters. Exactly. So don't I am not recommending anyone do it no. while driving. No, don't. But I have seen people do it. No. Head down to Buffalo, catch a game. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll be the envy of the entire party, <laughs> right? Now, this is where we have... A ton of this is Royal King Alley we're entering. So yeah. from about <coughs> right here, right here, all the way down, all Royal all King accessories. Down. Look at this, folks. This, it's not even just the tops there. It's down below as well. Look at this. Really like the sauce pot and brush combo. When you're putting sauce oh, on your food, I recommend heating up the sauce. It's going to give you an even more even coat. You're not going to get brush strokes. It's a nicer presentation, but also nicer distribution. You can heat this up, rate the sauce up right in there, or you can pour hot sauce, whatever you like. Um, more light options. And uh, for the price point, these broken carving knives are actually really good too. Okay. For, for $20, and again, today with the 20% off, excellent value. Um, slicing up that brisket. Slicing up the brisket. 
I really like the grill mats to hold your accessories on so you can just take them off, throw them in the dishwasher, throw them in the sink to wash them off rather than having the grease and everything build up on your side shelves on your barbecue. Mm -hmm. I'll get this back up there. There we go. Um, so again, you can see all the different griddle sizes, shapes. And again, they are, um, they are designed to fit a specific model. So just make sure you know which model they have before you purchase. That's right. Um, here's the pizza stone that I like. I know we were asking about the pizza stone before. That's right. So it actually comes with um, with a little rack here that goes around it, and then it's dual sided. So there's a flat side. There's also a, a riveted side, and it gives you a different texture on your crust. Um, I was using the flat side like all the time and last year i started using the the rib side and i actually like the rib side better you know you get a little bit more airflow in there i just i like the the crust texture there uh, and if you do the deluxe set here it also does come with the wooden peel which is really nice um if you haven't used this before i just recommend putting a little bit of uh cornmeal on there so that the dough slides off right onto the stone um, can you use the stone on the pellet grill? 100%. Yeah, you can do it. Absolutely. And then uh, there's also this one as well. If you want just the stone, this is a rectangle shaped one. Yeah. But you absolutely, you can use the pizza stone on the pellet grill. You can use it on the keg. You can use it on the gas grills as well. Uh, when using a pizza stone, I want you to put it on the grill before you start it up. Yes. You want it to heat up with the grill. You don't want to take a cold stone and throw it on a 500 plus degree grill because there is a potential for them to crack. Yeah. Same thing. I know that we're not talking about salt blocks today, but if you want to cook a steak on a salt block, same idea. You want to put the salt block on before you turn on the grill, let it heat up gradually or else yeah, yeah. could have a potential issue there. That's right. Now I think right behind you over your shoulder there, uh, you got uh, the... Here's the hot rod. There you go. Yep. Here's the hot rod there. And then this is, I know that you can get a pizza peel on the other one. Uh, this one is heavy duty stainless steel. And this is also zombie apocalypse approved. It has a nice sharp edge and very, very heavy duty here. There you go. Right, I think we used it in a Robot Wars uh, <laughs> comparison I did for a TikTok. We were using uh, some of the things in here as Robot Wars accessories. So that's one for sure. Is there, um, is there anything else that anyone sees here that you'd like to yeah, folks, maybe have a look at? I think, I, I think I've covered all my favorites. Yeah, and there's still a lot of you watching right now. So if anyone's got questions, we don't always have Clint here in the store, guys. So, like, take advantage, right? Talk his ear off. He's here for it, right? And then we'll use the rotisserie basket, asks Matt. Rotisserie basket. Right, there you go. I have done chicken wings in here. Ooh. Yeah, they're excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So keep in mind, if you're buying this, you're going to want to make sure that the person you're buying for already has a rotisserie. Right. Otherwise, not such a good idea. But if they have a rotisserie, wings are the most common thing that I've seen done in there. But whatever you want to do to keep things moving around, yep. keep things crispy, keep things juicy. It's almost like self-basting when you have the rotisserie going because the, the food's gonna fall up. It's all gonna incorporate together to make the magic. For sure, for sure. Oh, what's the difference between the gloves, says Kathy? Um, right here. Really, this is gonna give you more coverage. I also find that, like I said, these ones are a little more burn resistant because it's leather versus the material, but they both have the exact same heat rating. I personally prefer these ones here myself, mm -hmm. but these ones work as well. Yeah, so just kind of like however often you're going to use them or whatever's in your price point, right? Yeah. Like, no need to break the bank over gloves, but at the same time, if you got it, go for them, right? And then I know that we already talked about the other one out there, but I just want to show, like, the quality of the steel on here. Very heavy-duty handle. So, again, if you want to get a smaller, here's another walk basket, but very good because you're not going to have any of the enamel peeling off. And, uh, again, this is, like, something that you could have a lifetime. Amazing. And then let's just show them the um, our sauce and uh, sure. spice selection That's because right. a whole bunch of that, right? The majority of the products that are available in this section here, you cannot find in any of the grocery stores. So if you want to get somebody something that they've never tried before, something that's just amazing. Highly recommend checking out some of the spices or sauces that are available here. Right, we get the broken section right down here. 
and we have used some of this stuff absolutely in our streams even absolutely we had just used the perfect kc barbecue rub for our chicken penne yesterday right so definitely good options here yeah and the with the, the flippins is the one option you might see in the stores but for the most part everything else here you're not going to find in any of the grocery stores um yeah so right. come yeah. check it out Burger King Perfect Barbecue Sauce is one of my favorites, and the Perfect Steak Spice goes great on everything. And one more final stop for Burger King accessories, as if there wasn't enough, <laughs> right? We got lots. So many of these you saw on the gift table already. Uh, Craig says they love the Perfect Steak, so I guess the sauce over there, right? Yeah, the Perfect Steak Marinade goes great on steak, but also if you want to make someone that is a vegetarian a steak, marinate a portobello mushroom in with the perfect steak marinade for about 20 to 30 minutes grill at high heat and it will taste very steaky but still make your vegetarian or vegan friends happy now that is a tip for the modern world let me tell you right well so thank you very much for that yeah and i think i think that's it i think we covered everything unless there's anything else anyone wants to see I think we're good. I think you've answered a lot of questions. We've had a lot of interaction and it's been a lot of fun. I'm using lots a lot because that's, <laughs> that's, that's how much you're saving. You're saving a lot today as well. Exactly. So remember, Burrow King 120, order online to avoid disappointment. Cooking with Clint. Thanks for watching. Peace.